All right, everyone, now we have more positive news. It's a really, really high energy day right now. Ronna McDaniels offering her resignation to Donald Trump in a meeting the other day, saying, look, after South Carolina, I'm willing to step down. Let me be interim till then. D do you know why that specific timing, by the way, was explicitly mentioned in this meeting, <laughs> apparently with Ronna McDaniels? It's because as of South Carolina, it is clear Donald Trump is the nominee. Most of us have already understood this. I, I understood this before Iowa even voted. I looked at the numbers and I said, there's no possibility anyone else is gonna win a state. There, unless there's a brokered convention or Trump dies or something or has a stroke live on stage and staggers around with drool hanging off of his face, he will be the nominee. So absent funny business, assassination or health issues, he's your guy. And there's a pretty good chance that none of those things are going to happen. Ronna McDaniels chose that particular time period to say, okay, I have to look like I'm not being biased and I'm not supporting any specific candidate because there are still two people in the race that are registered and running. I'm not allowed to bow out now because it would be too on the nose. It would be too obtuse. Wait till after Nikki Haley loses in her home state by double digits, drops out of the race, presumably, if not, literally everyone in the GOP is going to tell her to shit can herself. If, I mean, she's crazy enough to continue after her inevitable loss in South Carolina. Uh, people are going to start thinking that she's a lunatic. Uh, not just dumb, not just a little bit out of touch, but a literal goddamn lunatic. And the entire party structure will come down around her. She'll have no donors. She'll be forced out of the race effectively. Uh, and, and she probably knows this. I don't even know why she's bothering to hang on at this point other than embezzlement or something like that. Ronna McDaniels therefore had to wait. She had to wait until after the voting in South Carolina when the writing is on the wall even for the TDS sufferers. A handful of people still hold it out for Nikki Haley and say, well, she can still win. She can still do it. Something magical will happen. Some Hail Mary moment and she'll manage to be the nominee. When you lose your own home state though, by a crippling margin, which she will, I would say minimum 10 points, I would say the over and unders between 20 and 25, then everybody else will come around. Nikki Haley's entourage will shrink to like three people that pat her on the back, tell her how great she is, and then mildly insinuate that she should just cut her losses and look forward to retirement because if you lose in your own home state, you don't really have a political career. Ron DeSantis got out in time, he saved himself with a somewhat lukewarm uh, endorsement of Donald Trump, but it was enough. It was enough for him to be, to escape the phrase. Okay, you know, clearly I'm not gonna win. I was betting on Iowa. I managed to come in second. So, you know, I cock blocked Nikki Haley again, by the way, I will always thank him for that along with Martha's Vineyard. Uh, and, and a successful war against Disney actually, on which Trump was actually wrong. One of the times that I've criticized Donald, Big Don, actually, was in the dust-up between DeSantis and Disney. Nikki Haley has no such glowing moments. I can't think of a single thing that she said that I agree with. She's an anti-gunner. She's in favor of gender transitioning 10-year-olds. Uh, she, she doesn't like using the term illegal immigrant, which is an apt term for people who have illegally immigrated to your country. Warhawk, neocon, idpole, the whole nine yards. Everything is there to make a negative Bushite-style candidate. Like basically, here's the Republican Party pretending to be the party of, of gender progress or something. Dude, they've tried that. It doesn't work. They're going to get outflanked every time. Ronna McDaniels, who is, by the way, a relative of Mitt Romney, is a symbol of the dying embers of the neocons within the GOP. Look at, what, look at the dysfunction right now in the House, being led by a, a young Tyro uh, at the moment. They can't even impeach Mayorkas. <laughs> they, can't, they couldn't even impeach Mayorkas. These people are batshit. Uh, what you need is MAGA populists and, and libertarian leaning Republicans to reform the party in a better direction because the old direction clearly doesn't work. It got hijacked effectively by Bill Clinton. People don't even know their recent political history. This is not an ancient news. Ronald Reagan got in and he was very, very popular. Wins an election, re-election landslide, etc. He kind of gets demented towards the end, the last three years or so, and, and does the neocon thing. That became the new consensus. What did Bill Clinton do wisely after Herbert Walker imploded because of his foreign policy messes? Bill Clinton effectively took Reaganism and sprinkled in a little bit more welfare, said, hey, by the way, I'm 30 years younger, vote for me. That's it. The Democrats became the neocons that they pretended under Mondale and Carter and people like that to oppose. The same thing, same shit, different asshole. They took the, the worse 
uh, term of Ronald Reagan and added a couple of things to it. It's basically nothing new, and then they ran with it. Every candidate since then has done the same fucking thing other than Donald Trump. Joe Biden represents a relapse into the same neocon, neolib mentality, but the neocons are being purged. I mean, Mitch McConnell, he's sick and fucked up. He's not going to be around much longer. He won't be able to save him. McDaniels will be out. So you know, Kevin McCarthy's out. You know, not that the new House leadership is necessarily better, but at least it's not Kevin McCarthy. Uh, it's complete dysfunction. They're strangulating themselves because of the schism within the party as the neocons grapple with the fact that people are abandoning them and they want populism. They, want, they, they, they actually want their taxes lowered. They don't want the candidate to say, I want to lower your taxes. They want the candidate to actually get in there and then do it like Donald Trump did. They don't want the candidate to just say, well, I'm hesitant towards starting a bunch of wars on credit and stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm more skeptical. They want the candidate to actually not start new wars. They want Donald Trump. You see where I'm going with this. They don't want empty words with regards to online censorship, Section 230 reform and stuff like that. They want someone who will actually follow through like, hmm, maybe a person who and oh, whose fans have all been persecuted by that tech system. The one that immediately proposed an Internet Bill of Rights and 230 reform on the first day that he goddamn made his first uh, campaign video on Rumble. In other words, Donald Trump. Again, you see where I'm going. Ronna McDaniels. R Mitt Romney will be gone. He's not seeking re-election. The whole family will be forced out of politics. Good riddance, by the way. Mitt Romney was a terrible candidate. Uh, you remember in the uh, uh, election in 2012, Mitt Romney's running. People were mystified. For the last month of the campaign, he was almost a no-show. He basically gave up. Carl Rove, meanwhile, goes on Fox. Well, I think that he can win Ohio. Everything will be fine. And then, of course, on election night, had his legendary meltdown that I will literally never forget because it was so funny. Thank goodness Ronna McDaniels is gone. And one caveat here, of course, Donald Trump endorsed her. And people were mad at him at the time. And, and rightfully so in the ideological sense. The way I interpret it, of course, is he knew she was going to win anyway and wanted to not burn the bridge because he needs a little bit of in-party cooperation. And then also, he gets to claim that he was the kingmaker, that she owes the job to him, which means that she can do exactly what she's doing now, which is explicitly offer him resignation. She's treating him like he is the president of the United States. One good turn, of course, deserves another. That's about all. Peace out.